Hi there. Um, if you're looking at this video, I'm guessing you're having some trouble with number six on that uh, Trig Math Lab 2A. What we're given in that question is that we know, and I'm going to make sure I get this right, the sine uh, of theta. We know a value for that, and we're given some funky looking uh, zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 360 degrees. These are a lot. Um, tied to examples five and six in the videos, but it's a really great example of a question that pulls together a lot of different ideas from the chapter. Hint, hint, it's a really good test question, right? So the things we have to remember, what we've been learning about is something called the cast rule, which just tells us which quadrant things are positive in. And that has to do with the fact, remember this A means all, because um, X, Y, and R are all positive there. So the ratios of them end up positive. In quadrant number two, only sine is positive over there because cosine and tangent use um, that X value, which is a negative in that quadrant. So the cast rule is just to help you remember, hey, my answer is gonna be over here somewhere. So for instance, let's say I told you that I found sine of an angle, and I'm not telling you what the angle is, and I get for an answer, and I'm making this up, 0.2358. Now you've done this sort of math before now. What's new here is this whole idea that there might be more than one answer. And there's all sorts of stuff to do with something called the ambiguous case and the sine law that comes in here and is super cool. But really, Anytime you see a trig ratio and you're looking for your angle, you know that's where you're going to use that second button on your calculator, especially if we've got a decimal over here. If you don't have a decimal, then you've got to work with exact values and start drawing pictures and thinking. But for this one, it's easy. You grab your calculator and you're undoing sign. If you think about it as if, hey, if I knew the angle, I would find sign of the angle and it would spit out 0.2358. We're going the opposite direction here. We're undoing sine to find out what the angle was before that. So I'm going to go undo sine of 0.2358. Different calculators, you punch that in in a different order. You need to know your calculator. The other thing to watch, in the question it told us that zero was less than or equal to, yes, theta, which is less than or equal to 360 degrees. This tells you Make sure your calculator's in degrees because we want degrees as our answer. So I hit undo sine of 0.2358 and I get that theta is 15 degrees. Now, is that a good answer? It's a wonderful answer. If I grab my calculator and find sine of 15, I get 0.2358, probably with more digits and rounded off, but I get that. The catch is when I see this as a part of my question, it tells me there are more answers probably. There could be, hypothetically, as many as four because there could be an answer in every quadrant that has that exact same reference angle. Now, we know when I look at 0.2358, that's a positive number. The sine value for this angle is positive. That means I need to find answers anywhere sine is positive, which is in quadrants one and, tr one and two. I have my quadrant one answer. How do I find my quadrant two? Well, my quadrant two answer, which is over here, is the angle in standard position. So I rotate around and find my terminal arm. And I know that it has a reference angle right down here that is 15 degrees. So I can see that this angle right here will be 180 minus 15. In other words, 165 degrees. There's my second answer. So theta could be 15 degrees or 165 degrees.